Good morning, Village Church, man. Welcome back. Man, I'm so excited because we're back at our watch parties, and I hope once again that I am sitting beside somebody today enjoying an opportunity to worship. And maybe you're sitting at home and you're like, man, I want to be involved in watch parties. You can do that. Still have an opportunity. Go online. Sign up today. And also, I have a quick announcement before we get started. This Saturday, that's right, this Saturday, June 27th at 10 a.m. This Saturday, June 27th at 10 a.m., we are meeting at Cutler Bay Middle School, and we are going to be going out into our community, and we are going to be passing door hangers out in Cutler Bay. I'm excited about this. This is a great opportunity for our church to continue to reach people during this time, but also to direct people to a place of hope, uh, a place of encouragement, and ultimately a place where God is online in our sermons and our messages. So please, please show up this Saturday if you're interested in that. That's going to be 10 a.m. We're hoping to get five groups. We have our leaders coming. We're going to be going out in the community. It's going to be an awesome, awesome opportunity. You'll even get to meet some new people. So make sure you guys are ready for that. Put that on your calendars. And last but not least, if you want to be a financial partner in this ministry, please, you can do that today. You can go online to our website at www.myvillage.cc or you can text any amount to the number 84321. And all of that money goes to further the kingdom here in South Florida. So thank you all who are already financially partnering with us. Thank you for everybody that's serving with us, that's helping with the backpack program on Friday, that is actually helping with the V-Kids. And we have V-Kids online too. So make sure you guys check out those resources. But that's enough for announcements today. I'm going to jump right in. We've been in a series called Media Madness. I, it's no mistake uh, right now that we can look around and we can tell that we are in a stage of media madness. There is media everywhere. And I don't know anybody that goes home and watches the news and just feels better about life. Amen? I don't know anybody that does that. That goes home and they turn on all this media and they just automatically feel less stress, less angry, less depression. I haven't met that person right now. You know what I'm saying? Because we are in a stage of media madness. It's just so much media out there. And, and the, the problem with it, and let me hear me out, we're not that church that's telling you to go burn your laptops. Amen? That's not who we are. We're not that church. We are the church that in a media-driven society, we want to help you and teach you how to live in the world, but not be of the world. Amen? So that's what we're here today to do. And honestly, one of the things that I feel like has been most affected by media in the last half century is our worldview of sex, dating, and marriages. That's right. I, I really believe that with this influx of information that can be put out there at the touch of a button with just one person, anybody with an idea or a theory on sex, dating, or marriage can just be blasted out there and be adopted by people. And now with this influx of media, we have so many different thoughts and theories and ideas on sex, dating, and marriage. And, and really, media has driven that. It has pushed that out there. Think about it. We used to have shows like I Love Lucy, right, where, where they wouldn't even be seen in the same bed together. Now we got shows like The Bachelor, where they're all in the same bed together. You know what I'm saying? Come on, somebody. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Media has shifted the ideas and the worldview about what we believe about sex, dating, and marriage. And so what we want to do over the next couple weeks, the next two weeks in particular, I'm going to start us on a, on a, on a two-part message. You say, what's a two-part message? Two-part message is this. It means if you're watching this week, you want to be back next week. Amen? Maybe you're watching later online. Well, this message is called Happily Ever After Part 1. So when you're done with this one, that's right, go find Happily Ever After Part 2. Because that's what we're going to do. We're going to walk through a two-part message over the next couple weeks about what the world tells us through media happily ever after looks like. But then again, we're going to compare that to the Bible. And we're going to see what a real happily ever after looks like according on the, uh, to the scriptures and according to the foundation of the Bible. Amen. So if you have a Bible and you're excited today, I hope you are because this is going to be good. Look, whether you're single, married, dating, looking to be dating, complicated, it doesn't matter. This is for you. You want to tune in. You want to be involved every week. This week we are going to particularly be focusing in on this idea of when God established 
relationship. When God established relationship. And next week, you don't want to miss it because we're going to be talking about marriage. We're going to be so we're going to be zeroing in on this idea of marriage and what that means biblically. So if you have a Bible, go with me to Genesis. Genesis chapter 2. I'm going to go ahead and read. Remember, this is called Happily Ever After. And I'm going to read starting in verse 18. So if you have your Bibles, Genesis chapter 2. Genesis is written uh, by, a name named Moses, by a man named Moses. And if you've read the Bible, you know Moses is a key figure. And, and he actually wrote the first five books of the Bible. And we as Christians, we believe this is the foundation. We believe this is actually real. This is the creation story. This is when God created man. But not only man, but God also in this moment created relationship. And so I want us to look at that. Starting in verse 18, it says this. It says, The Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out all of the ground, or formed out of, all, out of the ground all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock and birds of the air and beasts of the field. But Adam had no suitable helper. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and they will become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. Let's pray this morning. Father God, Lord, I just thank you so much. God, I thank you for your word. <clears throat> that allows us the opportunity to dig in and see your heart and see who you are and who you created us to be. Father, in this world of media right now, I pray that you would open our eyes and our hearts to what you have to say when in regards to relationships, dating, marriage, sex, all of these things. God, I pray that we would just open our hearts and our minds to you today. God, we would allow you to pour in to us and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So when I was in elementary school, there was a moment, or, or more like a day, and it came every year that I just absolutely loved. I could not wait for this day. Now some of you may not have had this same experience. I think I've actually asked people, and a lot of people outside of South Carolina, I don't know if, if you had this, maybe you did, but, but it was called the book fair. Do you remember the book fair? Anybody know what the book fair is? Yeah? Maybe? Okay, let, let me explain real quick. So where I grew up in South Carolina, we had this thing called the book fair. And every year, they, the book fair would come to our library at our local elementary schools. And, and the purpose of the book fair was actually to, I, I guess it was to encourage kids to read, right? Like, so you would show up, and, and that day, you, or that week, they would send something home with the parents that say, hey, we got book fair coming. Mom, dad, whoever, grandma would give you $5, 10 15 $20, and you would show up to the book fair, and, and you would buy the books, right? And you would look around, and like, for me, I love this day for two reasons. Because number one, I got out of class, right? I hated to read. It had nothing to do with reading. I got out of class, and number two, they always had cool yo-yo books, right? Amen. I loved the yo-yo. Hey, your boy used to could walk the dog pretty cool, okay? I'm just saying. I used to love the yo-yo. So, so that's why I love the book fair. I would go, and I would want, I'd want to get these yo-yo books, maybe paper plane books or magic books. I, I was weird that way. And anything that didn't involve me really having to read a book, right? But, but just got to get something out of it. So, so I loved the book fair. But it never failed. Every year I'd go, and I would have to actually get a book. It was terrible. I'd have to get a book to read. And, 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 and since I hated reading, and I hated books, and I, I didn't really want anything, the, the way I went about getting the book was complete opposite of what most people would do when actually picking what book to read. See, here's what I did. I have ADD, so like, I'm, I love colors. Like, I, I love colors. Anything that's colorful, like, if you want to get me into a store, walk me past something that's colorful. I don't care what. It could be a bed sheet store. As long as it's colorful, I'm probably going to walk in, right? And, and, and so what happened when I was younger, when, when I'd go to this book fair, I, this is how I picked my books. I would walk around and I would just look. And whichever book looked best 
on the cover, that was the book I would go up to. And once I found the book, I would pick it up and I'd look at it and write the color. The, the colors were nice. The front of it looked real cool, man. A lot of cool graphics, a lot of things right there. And then what would I do? What do we all do? Flip it over, right? And look at the back of it. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, cool. I, I may read a line or two on the back, but I'm not going to actually open up and look inside. I don't really care. It, it, I just judge the book based off of the outside, right? And, and I know that, that we all do that. We all do that when, when it comes to, to books and things like that. But in reality, let's just be real. We do this with relationships. Come on, guys, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't you lie right now. Come on, you know. If you're a guy, you know. This is what we do. We see a girl. We check the front out. Mm -hmm, looks good. We check the what? We check the back out. Uh, okay, okay, so I'm going to stop. But seriously, that's what we do. We're like, looks good. Mine bought it. That's me. And we never take the time to actually look inside and to figure out who this girl is. We just are attracted to the outside, to the physical, to what we can see. And girls, you're just as guilty. You're just as guilty. Because, here, here let me hear me out. You're just so excited that he's checking you out. <laughs> you're just so excited. You don't care about it. You don't care if he wants to get to know you. It's been so long since any guy's given you any attention. You're just happy. You're like, yes, check me out. Yeah, me. And then what happens is we make this commitment. We, we practically just commit to each other without really even knowing each other just based off of the outside and the physical. And the problem with that is as that gets damaged and as that wears away, if we have nothing on the inside to attach us, to consume us, to keep us together, our relationship was built on a false foundation. And you know, I'm convinced today that many of us struggle in this area today. We struggle in this area of dating and relationships and sex and marriage because if we were honest, we don't take time to get to know each other before we commit to each other. We get in this thing called a relationship and I'm just as guilty. I'm not speaking to people today and somebody that hasn't been through it. I've been in, mar in a marriage that failed. I've been through a divorce. I'm speaking as someone that has learned from my past mistakes. And, I, and I'm here today to plead with you, to share with you some wisdom that God's given me over the years. And, and so some of us struggle in this area because we, we look at the outside and, and we pursue and we pursue relationships. And we do all these things. And in reality, we're building our relationships on these false grounds, on these grounds that are unstable. So today, here's what I want us to do. I want us to look at the Bible. And, and I want us to, to build a foundation. Maybe you're already married. This is good information to go back on to understand. This needs to be the foundation of our marriage. Maybe you're looking for a relationship today. Or maybe you're not. Maybe you're just chilling. That's cool. But you need to take notes for the future. But today I want to look in God's Word and I want to see what the biblical foundation for relationship is today. See, I'm, I'm convinced there were a few things that took place with Adam and Eve before they ever met each other, amen? Before they ever came together. And I want to share this today with you. If you're taking notes, write this down. The first thing that we see from the Bible is that Adam and Eve had intimacy with God before they had intimacy with each other. They had intimacy with God before they had intimacy with each other. Let me say this, girls. If he's more, if he is more inclined to want intimacy with you than with God, you don't need him. If that's what he's after, you don't need him. Guys, if she is looking to gain her intimacy from you and not from God, you don't need her. That's not what it's for. That's not what it's about. If you establish a relationship on those grounds of gaining intimacy from each other, you're going to keep having to go back to each other to be filled up, and there's going to come a day when you're not going to actually be able to do that for each other because you're expecting something from each other that only God can give you. Look at the Bible. Look what happens. Let's go back. The Bible says that God created Adam in the beginning. He actually created Adam back before this verse in like verse 7, I believe. In, in chapter 2, and the Bible says that when He created man from the dust of the ground, He breathed life into him. Now, God knew that Adam needed a helpmate. Amen? God is God. God's, it wasn't like He created Adam and later on He was like, you know what? I think this would be good. No, God knew His plan. He knew what He was going to do. Have you ever thought about that? He knew these things, but He didn't 
didn't just give Eve to Adam. He needed Adam to experience intimacy with him first. Why? So that he would know how to give intimacy to Eve. See, some of you women are out there pursuing a guy that doesn't know how to get intimacy from God, therefore they can't give you true intimacy. See, here's what the Bible says, that, that after Adam was created, Adam and God spent some time together. It says that, that God began to create trees and, and shrubbery and plants and all these things. And Adam sat back and watched. Adam was not pursuing a woman. He was just entertaining God and loving God and just listening to God. He was just watching God do things. He was developing in a relationship and intimacy with the Father. See, God needed to show Adam what it was like to truly care for someone. What it was like to truly care for creation so that when Eve was presented to him, he would know the proper way to love and to cherish and to take care of her. And in the same way, look at, look at Eve. The Bible says that God actually took Eve away from the, the, the flesh of the man. Took the flesh of the man away from him, away from Adam, and went and prepared Eve and went and built Eve up in a, in a secret place. And then he walked with her back to Adam. He spent significant alone time with Eve before Eve ever met Adam. My question is today, are you spending more time searching and seeking a spouse than you are searching and seeking intimacy with God? Now, which one are you doing? Because, see, the Bible says that we are to pursue intimacy with God. Adam was not running around saying, God, I think it's time that I get a woman. No, he was just saying, God, I, I love you. God, I'm just here. And then all of a sudden, out of intimacy with God, relationship with each other was produced. Hear me out. We have no idea how to be intimate with others unless we know how to be intimate with God. Your relationship, your relationships are never going to be full. You're never going to experience the fullness of them unless you learn intimacy with God first. See, we live in a society where intimacy is kind of like the goal, right? Like it's the goal. Like the goal for us is like to get married, amen? That's the goal. We've got to find somebody to be intimate with, to be in love with, to be married to. And in this American dream, we've made this the goal. And the problem when intimacy and marriage and these things become the goal, they become your God. And when they become your God, you stop pursuing the one true God. That as you pursue Him, the Bible says that He will give you the desires of your heart. The Bible says that He will produce these things. He will, he will give you these things. But see, we have got to pursue God. And see, I love this because Adam and Eve are spending time with God away from each other. Spending time with God, and the closer they get to God, they don't even realize it, but the closer they're getting to each other. See, some of you today, you're pursuing intimacy with all these other things. And the Bible says that if you would just pursue intimacy with God, all these other things will be given to you. You don't have to worry about these other things. If you want to know what it's like to truly be loved and to truly be appreciated, you find that in God. And then number two, if you want to actually be able to give that love back out, you've got to get it from God. Your relationships must be founded not on intimacy with each other, but on intimacy with the Father. The second thing I want you to see today, and this is important. Now, now take notes, write this down. This is probably, this could be the most important point of the entire message. So, so let, me, let me be clear here. Write this down. Two things that happen. Again, this is number two. This is something that happened before Adam and Eve met. Here's what God did. God gave Adam a responsibility and God gave Eve a role. Let me just say this. God gave the man a mission. Amen? God gave him a mission before a mate. Some of you guys are, write this down right now. Look. No mission, no mate. Amen? Hey, no job, no Sir Bob. That's a South Carolina one for you right there. You can laugh all you want. That, that, that's it though. Here's it, here it is, ladies. If the man doesn't have a mission, he don't need to be your mate. See, look what happened. God knew that Adam needed a helpmate when he created Adam. But what did he do before he gave him the mate? See, he went to Adam and said, Adam... It's, good. it's not good for man to be alone. I'm going to create a helper suitable for you. Now here's what we do. All right, God, where? When? Right now? Where is it? Right now? And, and we put everything on hold. God, where is, it? where is she? Where is he? God, when? 
But see, when God gives a promise, there's always a process attached to it. Amen? See, the reward is always wrapped in responsibility. God is not going to give Adam the reward of a precious gift of a woman that he can't be responsible for. Come on, somebody. Let me tell you something, women. If he's not responsible now, there's nothing that's going to make you make him responsible in the future. You're not going to be a, a, a wife. You're going to end up being a mother. And that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that Adam had responsibilities. He said before he ever gave Eve to Adam, he gave him animals to name, he gave him a garden to tend, he gave him work to do. And then what did he do with Eve? Eve had a role. Before Eve ever met Adam, she spent time with God understanding her role as a helpmate. See, we don't think about this when we read this story, do we? We just think of it in terms of like one thing after another. God said, go to sleep. Two seconds later, here's Eve. Two seconds later, they're together. But the Bible doesn't teach that. And as a matter of fact, he had 24 hours. The Bible says, yeah, they were made in, in, in day six. And, and he had hours and hours to do this and to accomplish this. And, and see, Eve, I believe, spent a significant amount of time with God preparing herself and being prepared as this gift for Adam. She had a role to play. She was a helpmate. She had to understand it. See, here's what I want you to know. God wants to work on you before He works on your relationship status. God wants to build something in you so that when He puts someone in your path, not only are you prepared for them, but they're prepared for you. See, a lot of you out there, you're searching and you're seeking people and you're pursuing and you're pursuing. And honestly, you're pursuing something that if you were honest today, you're not even prepared for. If you were to actually obtain it, you would probably mess it up because God hasn't done enough inside of you yet. If you were honest today, I've been there, we've all been there. But the Bible says here that He gave Adam a responsibility before He gave him a wife. Guys, let me tell you something. Your wife is not there to do your laundry. She's not there to take care of your kids. She's not there to cook your meals. That's not what a woman was created for. See, the Bible says something about a woman. See, to be a helpmate, Adam had to have a job for her to help with. Amen. If he don't have a job, what are you helping with? See, what that means is that, men, you need to be doing these things on your own already, and then God will provide a woman to come along and help you in the long run. See, no woman wants to marry somebody they got to take care of. Come on, somebody. Girls, can I get a hallelujah? Come on. You don't want to marry a man that you got to babysit. Guys, take some responsibility. And let me tell you something on the flip side. Men, let me say this. If she doesn't understand her role, you don't want to marry her. If she doesn't know her role in Christ as a genuine, valued, precious gift of God, you don't want this woman having your children. Let me tell you that. I can promise you. And here's why. Because, see, the Bible says that a woman is the most... It is a precious gift. Think about this. The woman is the only thing created. The only thing created. That was created from the flesh of man that God breathed his spirit into. Even man was created from dust. But woman, woman was created from man. She is unique. She is special. She is valuable. She should be treated as such. When God fashioned Eve, he wasn't just fashioning a wife. He was fashioning a mother. He was fashioning someone that was going to carry the Messiah. A woman that was going to bring in the birth of the risen king. This was not just an ordinary thing that he gave. This was a gift. This was something to be valued, to be pressured, let me, to, to be precious. And let me tell you guys, if she doesn't value herself, she's not going to value you. Women, you're a gift. You're a gift to God. You're a gift from God. You should treat yourself as that. You should live in such a way. You don't have to just settle for any guy that comes your way. No. God's created you better than that. God's given you more than that. God created you more unique than that. I can promise you that. This is the fact, this is the, the thing that we deal with uh, today is that we don't understand that God has given us a role and God has given us a responsibility. And if you want a healthy relationship... Man, you got to carry out your responsibility to your wife, to your family, to God. And the women, you need to carry out your roles to the, to the man, to God, to your kids. The loving role of being a precious gift from God. And men, you need to treat 
the woman such a way. And we're going to talk about this next week, but let me just say this. If, if a woman was meant to be beneath us, God would have taken her from the heel and not the rib. Amen? Some people would always say God took her from the, would have taken her from the heel, not the hip. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. But that's neither here nor there. We're going to talk next week about that, so don't miss it. Tune in. I'm telling you, marriage next week. But here's what I want to say this. This is the last point. If you're taking notes, write this down. This is important. I think we miss this in, the, in this story. Oftentimes, like I said, we kind of like stack it all up like this happened, this happened, this happened, like back to back to back. But the, the Bible kind of teaches something different here in Genesis chapter 3. And, and I want to kind of, <laughs> I want to look at this again. It said, so the Lord God caused the man to fall asleep into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the ribs from the man and he closed up the place of flesh. Then God made woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man. You know, one of the things that I find so different about now versus back then is, is, is how we pursue each other, right? But see, I want us to see something here. And if you take a note, write this down. Before Adam and Eve ever met each other or were brought to each other, I want you to know something. They trusted God for each other. They trusted God for each other. Think about this. Like I said earlier, Adam wasn't walking around looking at all the animals being like, yo, God, I don't see her yet. Yo, God, where's she at? Like, I'm naming all these, but I don't see one for me. That, that, that's not what it was. God went to Adam and he said, hey, look, Adam, I'm making you a promise right now that there's someone for, I, I'm going to make a helper suitable for you. And after that, Adam continued to live in intimacy with God, continued to carry out his responsibilities to God, all the while waiting on the promises of God. He trusted God for Eve so much so that when the time actually came, when the time, uh, time had passed and when the time actually came, God said, hey, now it's time. I need you to sleep. I'm going to put you down and I'm going to go create this, this being. And, and, and Adam said, yeah, see us all, like, let's just be real, guys. We, God was smart, first of all. He put Adam to sleep because many of us, if we were honest, we would have been there and be like, yo, God, like, all right, so what, let's go make her. Let, let's go do this, right? Let, let's go. And then you're going to be over there and you're going to be like, yeah, God, if you could actually, you know, like, you can make, you, you make that a little bit bigger right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe like the look, Coke bottle, you know, Coke bottle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it like that. And yeah, make those a little bit, yeah, bigger. Yeah, you know, you get what I'm saying, right? Amen. That's what we would be doing. If we were there, Adam would have been over there like, yo, God, how about this, this, this. But no. It's not what he did. He trusted God for her. He, tried, he said, God, I'll rest while you go build her. God, I'll pursue you while you go build her. God, I will commit to you. While you prepare her for me. God, I'm not going to come to you with my checklist. See, this is what we do with God when we want to be in a relationship. We have our checklist, right? He better look like this. He better make this. He better act like this. He better smile like this. He better have this. He better have that. Or she better have this. She better have that. She better have this education, this drive, this person. And what we do is we come to God and we say, God, I trust you for my relationships as long as they meet all these check marks. God, I trust you for my marriage and my future husband. As long as they do this and they cook and they clean and they, you know. God, I, I trust you as, as long as all this happens on my list, right? But that's not what Adam did. He trusted God for Eve. He said, God, you know my heart. God, I spent enough time with you, enough intimate moments with you that you know my heart. You know who I am on the inside and out. And God, you know who and what is best for me. And look at what Eve did. The Bible says that he made Eve in hiding. I want some of you women to know right now, God may have you in hiding right now. He may be preparing you for somebody that he has waiting for you right now. So don't be discouraged in the waiting place because while Eve was getting prepared, God was also telling her, hey, you need to trust in me because I have a man for you. And what happens? The Bible says that they were away and they had to walk back to Adam. Hear me out. Somebody right now, you are walking with God and you are getting 
getting hopeless. You are starting to lose hope. You are starting to lose faith because you've been in hiding for so long as God continues to prepare you. But I want you to know something. Eve kept walking with God until the promise was seen before her. The promise of Adam. Do you think God just created Eve and said, hey, come with me. I got a surprise. No. God had to prepare her for her role. We talked about this earlier. Eve knew what she was getting into, but she didn't run around and go ahead of God. She didn't come after God. She walked with God until Adam was before her. Think about that. Think about that. How many of you today are trusting God? Fully trusting God for your relationship and your spouse. See, we can go out and do it ourselves. I mean, if we're honest, we can. We can go out and find the person we like that looks good, that acts good. We can, we can find our check marks. But the moment they don't live up to our lists and our expectations that we have for them, the relationship goes sour. We end up in a marriage that we're unhappy. Maybe we end up breaking up again and that's just one more breakup on the list of breakups in our life and now we're never dating anybody again because we hate guys or we hate girls. And in reality, it's, it, it, it's our fault because we went outside of God and we rushed God into something that God was not, had not prepared us for in the moment yet. See, some of you today, you're trying to do this on your own. And God says you need to trust me. You need to trust me for your spouse. You need to trust me for your marriage. You need to trust me for your relationship. See, many of you, you need to go back and you need to develop an intimacy with God so that you can learn to be intimate with your spouse, so that you can learn to be intimate with, with your future spouse if you're dating. Because we know this, it, come on somebody, it, it, intimacy is only for marriage, amen? Come on somebody, it's not the moment before marriage, but it's the moment after marriage that means the most. So make sure you save that. And here's the thing, maybe you're somebody like me that you say, hey man, I'm honestly screwed up in this area in my life. I want you to know something. There's grace for you. It's not about how you start. It's about how you finish. And God always is about a God of second chances. He always gives us another chance. Today is your day. Maybe you're watching this and you're like, I, if I was honest, I haven't lived up to any of these things. If I was honest, my relationship did not start with intimacy with God. If I was honest, I still don't have responsibility. Or if I was honest, I still don't understand my role as a precious gift from God. If I was honest, I'm still seeking affirmation from all these other places because the intimacy from God is lacking. If I was honest, I'm, I'm going out in my own will and I'm trying my own way. And even my marriage was, was started by ourselves and, and, and it wasn't trusting God. I want you to know something. Today is a new beginning. You don't have to leave this place continuing the same way that you came in. You can actually leave different. See, if you want a strong foundation for your relationships, I'm going to tell you this, this is key. It starts with a strong foundation with Christ. You will never know how to love your spouse if you can't experience the love from God through His Son, Jesus Christ. If you haven't experienced that yet, or if, you have, if your spouse has not experienced that, that, that yet, they're not receiving and you're not giving what is capable of being given and receiving the love of God. The love of God. But today, here's the good news. Here's the good news. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter your background. The Bible actually says that for God so loved the world that He sent His only Son. He sent His Son to, to redeem us because we know that we all fell into sin. Adam and Eve, later on, they fall into sin. They remove God from the center of their relationship. They find themselves in the presence of the enemy. How often do we do that? We're going to talk about this next week. Come on, somebody. We're going to talk about this next week when we talk about marriage. But, but we see this and, and we fall into sin. And because we fell into sin, now we are separated from God. We are separated from his love but the Bible says that in his love he sent his son Jesus that whoever believes in him come on church whoever can have new and eternal life be promised to live eternity with God in heaven maybe you're a Christian today maybe maybe you're a Christian and maybe you're in a relationship already maybe you're married and if you're watching this and, and if you were honest maybe you didn't start your relationship with intimacy with God or the responsibilities or the roles or, or trusting God and really your relationship's lacking right now. 
really your, your relationship is struggling right now. Let me tell you, these are the three things you need to put back in the center. You've got to put God back in the center of the relationship. I want us to see something real quick before we pray and we close. I want you to see this. This is a beautiful illustration of what God wants to do. He had two people that were intimate with Him, pursuing Him, living for Him, living out the callings they had on their lives. And what does He do? They're trusting God for their spouse. And so what does He do? He brings them together. He makes sure that their paths cross. Let me tell you, if you're trusting God, He'll make sure that it happens. He'll make sure that it happens. Would you pray with me today? Father, I thank you so much. Lord, I thank you for your word. And Father, I pray right now, God, that we would not have this false sense of happily ever after, God, but we would truly understand that happily ever after starts with a relationship and the foundation of your son Jesus. I pray today, God, that for those in the crowd that may be single, Father, they're, they're looking and they're hoping to find a spouse. God, we all desire that. That's a desire inside of us. Father, I pray that first they would desire to be intimate with you before they're intimate with anybody else. Father, I pray that their desire would be first to live out the roles and responsibilities you've called them to before they try to pursue anybody else. God, I pray that you would prepare us for the people that you have waiting on us. God, I pray that we would trust you in these seasons of loneliness, in these seasons, uh, God, where we don't see you or maybe we don't feel that, that you're working. God, I pray that we would continue to trust you and continue to walk with you knowing that your promises still stand, Father, and we are just a part of the process. And God, I ask all of this in Jesus' name. Everyone said, Amen.